Hello children and young people. Today I'm going to be talking to you about body image. So if you are someone who has ever thought negatively or you've just been a bit unkind to yourself about how your body looks and it's made you feel down and upset with yourself, then I'm going to be sharing with you today three really important things for you to use and think about strategies that you can put into your daily life so that you can start to appreciate the body that you have a little bit more. So if you would like some tips on how to have a better relationship with your body and to have a better body image, then just keep on watching. All right, so one of the most important things that I can tell you about the body that you have right now is that it will change. Now, from one day to the next, it may not seem as if it's changing an awful lot, but I can promise you, having been here now on planet Earth for 43 years, that my body has definitely changed and it is continuing to change quite frankly, in ways that I'm not all that chuffed about. Uh, but we'll come back to that in just a moment. Now, here's why it's really important for you to have a good perception, a good view of your own body. If at any point in time somebody said something unkind or unpleasant to you, if they were rude to you, or um, were just really spiteful towards you. We would classify that as bullying. And we know that bullying doesn't make people feel very good at all. Well, the same rules apply when you say those kinds of things to yourself. If you are unpleasant to yourself about how you look or how you think of your body, then you are bullying yourself and that is going to have a really bad effect on your overall levels of happiness and how confident you feel in yourself. So it's really important that when you identify that there is something about your physical appearance that you don't like very much, that you find a way to either change it or to make peace with it. And I would always look towards the making peace with it option as the first thing because that's the easiest one to do and it's the quickest one to do and actually it's probably the kindest one to do for yourself. Now we all go through phases of not being particularly happy about how we look. Sometimes that can change on a day-to-day -day basis. One day might be a good day, the next day might be a bad day but we would consider a poor body image to be an issue if someone is feeling like that more days than they are not. So if it's on your mind pretty much every single day about how you look or a specific part of your body that you don't enjoy, then that's going to start to become a body image problem for you. Now, as I mentioned at the very start, your body is always changing literally every single day but some of those changes are on a cellular level so you're not actually able to see them but overall as time goes by your body changes just like fashion changes you know sometimes there can be a certain trend where a particular type of clothing that just does not suit you is really on trend and you have to avoid that one because if you wear it, then it's gonna make you look bad. You know, one of the best things that you can do for a better body image is to figure out what clothes actually look right on you. That can make a really huge impact. So that would be something that we could classify as a small and external change. It's something that isn't going to require any cosmetic changes to your body. You're not gonna have to do anything too drastic in order to make peace with it. But there are other changes that you can make too. So for example, it might just be a case of changing the way that you think of how you look rather than actually changing how you look. That's often a good solution for us to find. And the reason why that one is so useful is because sometimes you can make permanent changes and then a few years later regret it, either because you genuinely realise that that was not the right thing to do or because you notice that something that was in fashion back then is not in fashion any longer. Let me give you a really good example years ago, so I'm talking like maybe the 1990s to the 2000 era, 
thin eyebrows were a thing. <laughs> like they were a real thing. Um, and I'm going to see if I can find a picture and insert it perhaps here. Uh, because what that meant was that everyone was plucking their eyebrows like, like they'd been drawn on by a pencil. They were super, super thin. Now, because plucking your eyebrows isn't a permanent change, but if you keep doing it over time, the hairs stop growing back and then it does become a permanent change. Well, a little bit, a little bit, I would say that happened to me. It also happened that um, I have one half of one eyebrow, which is white, like the hair is white. That's a whole other story. That's to do with a pigmentation disorder. As I say, we've all got things about our bodies that we don't enjoy very much. The upshot being that I was not left with very much eyebrow hair whatsoever. And it's only because of some cosmetic wizardry that I have eyebrows now. But it was some very expensive cosmetic wizardry. And quite painful, to be honest. So my point being that... If I had been happier back then with how I looked, I would not have plucked out my entire eyebrows and then ended up having a procedure years and years later to correct what I had done back then. It was a fashion. We need to be very careful about the things that we choose to change about ourselves because in that moment, we're not happy with how our bodies look. I will give you another example. Because I was really good at this when I was growing up. Once upon a time, I dyed my hair and um, it didn't go well. It did, it did not go well at all. And then to correct it, I tried to dye it back again. I put more dye on top of the dye. Uh, it was so bad that um, I burnt my scalp. Like I gave myself chemical burns from keeping this hair dye on and then dyeing it again, um, and uh, yeah, that was, that was a bad phase in my life. It is luck that that particular change to my body image was a temporary one because my hair grew back eventually, um, but yeah, it's definitely, it's definitely a period of time where I don't like to see the photographs, let's just put it that way. So why does this happen? Why do we get so obsessed with how we look? Well, there's probably a few reasons and I'm sure that Instagram is one of them, um, but it's also to do with how our brains are wired. We are very good at laser focusing in on things that are causing a problem for us, like really, really noticing those things. If, for example, there was like a little dot floating around on this screen, it would annoy you and it would keep annoying you and your attention would keep getting drawn to it because there's a blemish there that's not supposed to be there. And we can laser focus in on that thing so that everything else that's going on blurs into the background. We can get really highly attuned and focused sometimes and not always to the right thing. So the chances are that other people see the whole of you. And when I say the whole of you, I don't just mean the whole of your body. I mean, like, they see you for your personality, for your kindness, for your good sense of humour. Um, they see you for your intelligence. There's so many different things about you that they see that they're probably not tuned into that one problematic part of your body or your physical image that really concerns you. They're not seeing you in that way at all. This problem is just one that you've tuned into. And if your tuning was to go elsewhere, you might find that the problem begins to disappear or at least not seem so relevant to you anymore. Because here's the thing, that tuning in that we do, whilst we are as human beings quite naturally and automatically wired to do that in a very negative way, we can change that. We can put efforts in so that we begin to tune into the better things, the things that we like about ourselves. So it might be that you really struggle to notice something about your appearance that you can enjoy. But I can guarantee you, if you look closely enough, there will be something. Even if it is literally one eyebrow. <laughs> Even if it is just a particular tooth or the pinky 
You know, there is something that you can find about you, even if it's not good, even if the best you can do is to say, that bit's not too bad. That's the bit that you need to start turning your attention towards every single day. Every single day, you know what, I love this pinky. This is my favourite one, this one. Um, And start really giving positive attention and acknowledgement to those parts of yourself that are good, that you can enjoy, that you appreciate, that you're grateful for, or that actually just look really hot. Start tuning into those so that your attention isn't going so much onto the things about yourself that you are less pleased with. Remember too that your body image isn't just about your physical body. You can change your body image by what you wear, the colours that you enjoy or the jewellery that you're wearing. So, you know, even though yesterday was a wavy hair day, which means that today is like basically spaniel hair day, um, that means that I have to improve my appearance in other ways. So I'm wearing my cherry necklace because I like this one. It makes me feel good when I wear it. So this for me is like an extension. It's an extra part of my body image, even though it's not actually part of my body. So there are other ways that you can bring out good qualities within yourself, even if you're having a day where you can't appreciate your skin or your hair or your eye colour. Find other things that you can do and use to bring out the best parts of you. And maybe you can enlist some help from your friends here too, because they're outsiders looking in, so they can tell you what looks good and what doesn't look good, and you can help each other in that way. I can absolutely promise you that by the time you get to be my age, you'll look back on the photographs of the younger version of yourself, and you will wonder what you were so worried about and you will really appreciate how you look then when you look back. If you can start to appreciate how you look now, in the now, rather than later on when you're looking back, that would be a really beautiful thing to achieve and you can do it. You can do it simply by making sure that you focus in on the positive parts and that you keep drawing your attention in that direction. But there is a final thing that I will leave you with and that is to make sure that you are making realistic comparisons if indeed you must compare yourself to others. For example, there are other people who are in your network, like in your close peer group, your network, your friends, the people that you literally have contact with, who could be really good role models for how to do your hair or how to dress or um, how to carry your body with confidence even. And then there are the others. And those are the ones that we see on social media. Those people are not real. I mean, they're real people quite often, but they don't really look like that in real life. In fact, I can tell you now, I don't look like this in real life. This is me on a filming day. (laughs) And that means that there is a certain quantity of makeup happening. There's certainly a lot of hairspray going on today. Um, There are some false eyelashes happening. Uh, We've got some lipstick. Yeah, like it's, it's the works, it's all happening here. And there's also some very, very clever lighting. In fact, I wonder if I could switch down my light on that one. Yeah, there we go. That's a bit more natural light, isn't it? So you can see that, like in this light, my skin looks more textured probably. I probably look a bit more (laughs) grey in my natural skin tone. It's not as good. This makes a difference. And that's what you see on Instagram too, except you see it with even more modifications. You see Photoshop, you see image distortions to make people look better, you see literally apps like, uh, where is it, Facetune. Look, there's a picture that I Facetuned. I can't remember what it did. Oh, I made my eyeballs whiter (laughs) because they were bloodshot. Even normal people everyday normal people are tuning up their pictures before they put them onto Instagram. They're using filters when they're using Snapchat. You can't use those images as a benchmark. You can't use them as a standard to try and reach. They're not reachable because they're not real. And if you ever have the fortune to be able to meet maybe one of your idols or a celebrity in real life, 
that you have only ever seen on TV or online, you will know exactly what I'm talking about. A couple of years back, I went to a very glamorous party um, where there were some, let's call them celebrity YouTubers in attendance, and I had only ever seen them on YouTube and spoken to them on the telephone. When I came to meet them in the flesh, I can guarantee you, hand on heart promise you, that they look different. And it would be fair to say that they didn't look as good because they look normal. <laughs> That's the thing. When I was seeing them online, it was distorted to make them look abnormal. They didn't look like... I mean, they did look like real people, but it wasn't an image that anyone would ever be able to achieve because that's not how people look in normal life. In normal life, people's skin has got bumps on it and your pores have got holes in them and sometimes you get a bogey stuck up your nose. There's all sorts of different things. You get a bit dandruff or dry skin or those sorts of things. And all of those things get edited out when you're seeing them either online or through a filter or through a photo-tuned, photoshopped image that you see on Instagram. So remember, any of those sorts of images are not something you should be striving to achieve because they are impossible to achieve. They're not real. All right, that is everything for today. Thank you so much for watching and listening. If you found this video useful, helpful or inspirational in any way, shape or form, then please go ahead and click that thumbs up button. Make sure that you subscribe to the channel by clicking the red subscribe button. And I will see you all here again next time for some more words of wisdom for children and young people. All right, lovely to see you. Take care. Bye bye.